Adrian Flanagan returned to Hamble on Wednesday, two and a half years after he set out to attempt a vertical circumnavigation of the world via Cape Horn and Russia's northern sea route. We found Adrian and his 38-foot stainless steel yacht Barabbas at anchor off Gilkicker Point early in the morning. He'd spent a couple of days holed up in Chichester Harbour, preparing for the final few miles back to Hamble and his rendezvous with the media. The Navy's HMS Trumpeter joined us to escort Barabbas home. Adrian and Barabbas sailed from Hamble non-stop via Cape Horn to Hawaii, where he was forced to stop with engine problems. Then he sailed to Nome, Alaska, where a delay in obtaining permission from the Russians to transit the Northern Sea Route led to him leaving the boat over winter, before returning to her in spring last year. His attempt to transit the Northeast Passage last summer failed when thick ice blocked his way and he was forced to accept a lift for him and Barabbas on the deck of a cargo ship as part of an ice convoy which broke through the ice. Back in the water on the other side of the ice, Adrian again left Barabbas to overwinter in Norway and flew back out to her at the end of April for the last leg home. As we approached Hamble, other boats arrived carrying supporters and media crews. Among the welcoming party was his ex-wife and project manager Louise and their two sons, nine-year-old Benjamin and six-year-old Gabriel. As the small flotilla approached Southampton Water, HMS Trumpeter delivered a welcome brew to the lone sailor. With Barabbas safely berthed at the Royal Southern Yacht Club in Hamble, Annette Newton, the club's Commodore, welcomed Adrian home. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm Annette Newton, Commodore of the Royal Southern Yacht Club. The club is absolutely delighted to welcome you back, Adrian. What we'd like to do is to offer you honorary membership of the Royal Southern Yacht Club for the next year. And so welcome our latest member. Thank you. Thank you. So, Adrian, two and a half years after leaving Hamble, you're back again. How do you feel? If on the 28th of October 2005 you'd said to me that the, the date of your return is 21st May 2008, would you have gone? And I probably wouldn't have done. It was a long time. It was a long, hard uh, voyage. Um, but I'm very relieved. I mean, my overriding emotion is relief that um, I, I've, I've done something that I set out to do when I was a 15-year-old kid. And, and to harbour that dream for so long and then make it happen feels very satisfying, but really it's relief that it's done now. This last trip home was, was, was outstanding, in a word. Uh, I was always worried about the Norwegian Sea and the North Sea, mainly because the Norwegian Sea can be very unpredictable in terms of whether it gets slammed by the depressions coming in over Scotland, um, generated around Iceland. But uh, the, the North Sea, uh, I was expecting to be headed a lot with southwesterly winds. Um, and I said um, to Louise that she asked me how long was it going to take me to get back. And I said, well, anything from two and a half weeks to six weeks, two and a half weeks if I have wind on the beam or behind the beam all the time, but that's not going to happen. Well, that is exactly what happened. Uh, it was unbelievable. I had some beautiful sailing. Uh, Barabbas, on a sustained level, sailed her best during this last phase. At times she was holding seven, eight knots, constantly hour after hour, which for this boat was unprecedented. Um, we had a very lovely sail. We had one storm to deal with, um, but uh, Barabbas came through that with no problem. And uh, it was an outstanding experience. And the, the, the last leg of the Alpha Global was a, was a very enjoyable one. When I set out, um, the, the plan was to, was to circumnavigate non-stop, but um, I always knew that that was unlikely given the, the, the conditions that I'd be putting the boat in and the, and the, and the degree of uncertainty with the, with the route that I was planning. With adventure, true adventure, it, it's uncertain. That's why it's adventure. There is no definite outcome. And I accepted the mission 
and the and the voyage on that basis, and and therefore was of the mindset that I would accept and deal with whatever situation arose. And that was the situation arose. That was what I dealt with. A lot of people have said to me, "Well, it must be easier because then you were able to come home twice while the boat overwintered once in Alaska, once in Mayhem, and rest up and so on." Yes, that's true to an extent, but equally. It also makes it more difficult because, because at the back of your mind is you've got to go back and you've got to finish. It's unfinished business and, and you're living with it for a longer period, which is quite stressful. So it's probably checks and balances, but in the end, you know, it is what it is. I'm back here now at the Royal Southern Yacht Club. We've been vertically around the earth. We're the first, I'm the first single-handed sailor to do that. It feels great. I can't complain. Do you regard it as a complete circumnavigation given that you had to take a, a lift through the ice? The, on a personal level, yes, I do. The, the uh, World Speed Sailing Record Council, who are the sort of official arbiters of records of this type, would not recognize it because I, I was effectively assisted by taking a, a lift through the ice. That's fine. I didn't do this uh, uh, voyage to get on someone else's list. Um, I did this voyage for personal reasons. When I met the Arctic ice and it was impenetrable, I might as well have been trying to sail through the Himalayas. It wasn't going to, I couldn't do it. Um, and so I got lifted through. In much the same way that um, uh, circumnavigations via the Panama Canal are not recognized because the Panama Canal is man made, therefore you've got assistance, therefore it doesn't count. Interestingly, the WSSRC do not recognize Sir Francis Chichester's voyage as a single handed circumnavigation. So I do. Um, so, you know. Where we are with that, I think that the rules governing this kind of um, voyage need to be revisited because as they stand at the moment and as the WSSRC told me, they are effectively racing rules which have been broadly adapted to a non-racing event. I think that non-racing events uh, like this need to have their unique set of rules uh, written from scratch, but that's an argument that can go on and on. But um, as I said, I didn't, I didn't do this to get into, into the record books on, according to someone else's criteria. I wanted to take a boat vertically by myself around the world, by hook or by crook. And if that meant strapping it to my back and walking over mountain ranges, that is what I would have done. And that's what I've achieved, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, Louise, he's back. How do you feel? Elated. Absolutely elated. I think I can honestly say that this is the best day of my entire life. To see him come in with the Navy escorting him in and the chopper overhead and all the other people there was absolutely fantastic. It's what I've been waiting for for three years now and um, it's all come home today and I'm just, I just couldn't be happier. I've had so many hiccups along the way that there was every chance that it might not have happened so the fact that it has is just a tremendous gift. And this last bit of a voyage, he did it quite quickly really. He did. Two and a half weeks. Absolutely incredible. But you know, when he left his boat in Norway, and um, at that stage, uh, you know, a lot of people were quite disappointed that he didn't make it home in one fell swoop. Um, and the reasons he cited was that the Norwegian coast was too treacherous at that time. But he also said to me that he'd been so far with Barabbas that he really wanted to enjoy uh, the final part of the voyage with her. And, you know, if you'd written down what he expected, we couldn't have exceeded those expectations having written it down because he's had the wind behind him all the way. He's had one storm, but apart from that, he's just had the most fantastic sail home with her. And it's a really fitting end because, as you know, he's now selling the boat. Um, and his final experience with her has been one that he will remember for the rest of his life for all the right reasons.